Executive Committee Member Dr. Neil Sullivan will make the presentation to Lonnie Thompson. That's gold in them there hills. I'd like to thank Owen for his history lesson. It's always good to learn the lessons of history, and we had a very nice history lesson on the Tyler Prize that goes back to its origins uh, earlier in the evening. But it's my very distinct pleasure to talk about Lonnie Thompson, our second of the evening Tyler Prize laureate. You know, in science, there are prizes and there are prizes. But I don't think, at least personally, that there's any prize or any recognition greater than an individual scientist who creates a new area of science, an, a whole new field of science, or a new special niche within the area of science that hadn't been recognized before. And I think Lonnie Thompson has had an exceptional scientific career because he almost single-handedly developed the field of low latitude, that is tropical, ice core paleoclimatology. Lonnie recognized very early in his career, before others, the virtual gold mine of potential climate information such as temperature, precipitation, dust, wind strength records that were locked up in the tropical mountain glaciers. Maybe decades, millennia, hundreds of thousands of years of, in a sense, weather collectively that we think of as, as uh, climate. Now you might say, if, you hadn't, if it hadn't been given away by one of my colleagues, Neil or Lonnie, glaciers in the tropics? Are you serious? But I think that's partly the point. You can imagine Lonnie Thompson's challenge, which was a remarkably challenging task of trying to convince government funding agencies and even some of his scientific colleagues of the merits of spending precious science dollars on explorations of ice in the tropics, the heat of the tropics. They may have feared that his proposals, if funded, would win for him a not so coveted, or should I say infamous, Senator Proxmire Golden Fleece Award. It's not one we were looking for. Pursuing glaciers in the, and ice in the tropics. Well, the very idea of that. Instead, I'm most pleased to say that we're here honoring Lonnie with one of the most truly coveted awards in environmental sci science, the John and Alice Tyler Prize for Environmental Achievement on its 32nd anniversary. So you must know that through the dogged pursuit of resources, to fund early his expeditions in the 1970s and the immense planning and ingenuity to overcome logistical and technical obstacles, he was successful. But in addition to that, it is his personal sacrifice and I would have to say almost heroic efforts, sometimes working weeks above 19,000 feet elevation to collect, to return, and to unlock the remarkable climate records contained within the glacial ice through the techniques and technologies of science that tell us Lonnie really richly deserves this recognition. Now let me name for you, very briefly, some of his key scientific accomplishments. And one of the first ones I want to point out is, as Lonnie has pointed out to us, he doesn't work alone. He's a scientific leader 
of a team of international and interdisciplinary scientific colleagues. But it's Lonnie's scientific leadership, and through that he proved that ice of glacial age was actually present in the tropics, which many doubted. He discovered that major European climate events, such as the medieval warm period or the Little Ice Age, had co corresponding climate shifts in the tropics. We knew that they were occurring in the temperate regions and the polar regions. And he provided strong evidence of large tropical ice age cooling. So it gives us the possibility of thinking global, polar regions and the tropics. His work has left little doubt that the tropics have a, participated strongly in climate change and were not benign as previously believed. This has changed perspectives about the role of tropics in climate change to such an extent that some speculate that the tropics could be actually a driver of global climate change. So certainly a key ingredient of science is to change people's opinion. That's how we make progress. In addition to basic scientific observations and discoveries, there are some important implications of general interest to society from Thompson's research. They relate primarily to local communities and societies in South America and in Asia, which are dependent upon water supply in tropical regions for crop irrigation and for hydroelectric power generation. Perhaps the most important of his work reveals convincing evidence of unusual 20th century climate change documented in the unexpectedly rapid decay of the ice mass in glaciers around the globe most notably near the top of Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. I'm going to have a trouble. Kilikaya, I think. Ice mass in the Andes, glaciers of Tibet, and even in our own Glacier National Park, where the recession of glaciers may cause us actually someday to change the, nar the name of that park to Deglacier Park. We do know that the Earth is warming and tropical glaciers are being lost, and we can thank Lonnie for that. In summary, I'd like to say that Lonnie Thompson's passion for science, his concern for the well-being of the Earth system, the planet we call home, and his most generous public service are really now widely appreciated and recognized, and I'd like Lonnie to come up to the podium and uh, receive a special honor. Thanks so much, Neil, for those kind words. It's truly an honor to receive uh, the 2005 Tyler Prize. And Charles Keeling, it's my honor to receive it with you. Uh, I really appreciate the uh, Tyler Prize Executive Committee because I realize how much effort goes into making uh, these choices. And the Tyler Prize itself in honoring environmental sciences uh, it's such a big field, but it's a very, very important field. I, I want to thank a few people who have not yet been thanked. And first of all, uh, I'd like to thank my spouse and collaborator, Ellen Mosley Thompson. Would you please stand? Chief. 
Uh, she's helped me along the way many, many times, and she's endured my long stays uh, out of the country. And also, I want to thank uh, my mom, uh, Frances Thompson. Would you please stand? She's, she's my biggest fan. <laughs> And, and, and I, I have to thank uh, Yao Tang Dong. Uh, Yao Tang Dong and I have worked over 20 years in the Tibet, in the Andes, and I really appreciate him uh, taking the effort uh, to come so far. So thank you so much. <laughs> and, and, I, and I thank all, all the people who have come so far and given up their valuable time to, for this occasion, and I certainly do appreciate that. I thought this evening I, I would like to talk on just two things. Um, uh, I teach, and uh, one of the things is when you look at the future and you look at uh, 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 you, you need to be able to provide something positive for young people because it is a great world. And one thing that I have found in traveling and working around the world, there are tremendous people out there, and it's those people that give us hope for, for the future. But I want to go back to what Neil was saying about the beginning. Uh, back in 1973, uh, uh, and I use this for my graduate students, uh, when uh, we first got this idea, it was a colleague at, uh, at the Bird Polar Research Center uh, who had worked for the American Geographical Society. And he had made an atlas of northern hemisphere glaciers, southern hemisphere glaciers. And he had these boxes of photos. And in these boxes, we found a photo of the Kelkaya ice cap down in, in the Andes in Peru. And uh, it was that time, and I was still a graduate student, that this idea of maybe linking Antarctica with uh, Greenland came to mind. And uh, so we, we decided to take those photos to the polar programs in NSF and meet with the program manager. Uh, and we showed him this site, and we made this argument, and we were told that, you know, this sounds really interesting, but, you know, I can't really fund that because it's not north of the Arctic Circle and it's not south of the Antarctic Circle. So I actually left and I went to Bird Station in Antarctica uh, that year. And toward the end of the season in February, I got a telex from the program manager. And he said, I have funded all of my real science projects and I have $7,000 left. And what could you do on this tropical glacier for $7,000. And I remember we telex back and said, I think we can get there. And that's how we started. And since then, we have run 49 expeditions around the world. And these expeditions have taken us to some of the highest, uh, coldest places on Earth. And I have worked with colleagues in the best of conditions and I think in the worst conditions. And when I look at human nature, I think the thing where there is really hope, uh, you can actually see in these conditions. If you're working above 20,000 feet, it's cold. The wind's blowing. Uh, there's not too much food up there because you're at the end of the food chain. Uh, there's not too much air. And the work is hard. And yet our teams are international. We have people from China and Russia and from Tanzania and South America. And we work together in this environment to achieve an objective. And I think that there is something even uh, very basic in human nature when we have to. And, and, and it's really true. Under the harshest conditions, you actually see the very best in human beings. And I, I think I've seen a lot of that. And so uh, when you think about these places, yes, the, the, they're hard to get there, but, uh, but they're fantastic places on the planet. And I think in there lies uh, the great hope uh, for humanity in the future. So uh, I accept the prize. I accept this prize for my team because no one person does these things. And without that team, and that team, uh, a lot of that team has been with me for many, many years, uh, we certainly could not have made these accomplishments. So uh, I appreciate uh, very much receiving the award, and I appreciate all my friends here tonight. So thank you very much.
49 expeditions, number 50 to the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills. Right. It's rigorous, but you have good colleagues. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the awards ceremony. After dinner, we will be having an opportunity for you to visit, hopefully to visit with the laureates. There will be a bar, there is a bar set up in that corner of the room. There is a coffee station set up in this corner of the room. We encourage you to hang out with them for a while here, talk with one another, and get to know these people. Thank you. Enjoy your dinner. Thanks for coming. <laughs>